We've long discussed how the theory of plate tectonics is how the lithosphere is broken up into all these different tectonic plates. And of course, we already mentioned about these arrows. These arrows are representing the directions in which they're moving. And you can see that there's lots of different things that are going on. Sometimes the plates are moving away from each other. Sometimes they're moving into each other. And sometimes they're moving kind of like side by side past one another. And all these different boundaries make up the tectonic plate boundaries. There's three major types. I'd like you to write them all down. The first one we're going to discuss is called the divergent boundary. So maybe you heard of, to diverge is to split into two, right? To diverge. So divergent is when the two plates move away from each other. And an example here, because there's always going to be a place, an example to go along with it. One of those examples can be the mid-ocean ridge. So if this is our mid-ocean ridge, notice it's underwater. I would like for you to draw this. So you should have colored pencils. And I'll, the colors, the simple colors that I'm using, I'd like for you to use as well. So we have blue to represent the water, red to represent the magma, the lava. And then the black just represents the tectonic plates. One plate, two plates move apart from each other. The magma rises up, cools and hardens to take its place. And here's the water above it. This is all underwater. This is oceanic crust. And the plates move away from each other. This is a divergent boundary, one of the three major types. So again, would like for you to draw this. You can see a more real life example here as the divergent boundary, the two plates move past each other right there. And then that, of course, that opening it opens for just the tiniest little bit and the water rushes up. Some people have asked, like, as it moves apart, like, can something go underneath? The water doesn't rush down to fill in the void. The hot magma rises up to fill the void. So there's never, like, any water, like, creeping down in there, as far as I know. The second type that I'd like for you to write down is called a convergent boundary. So convergent is actually the opposite of uh, divergent. So instead of to diverge to come apart, the um, convergent means to come together. There's actually three types of convergent boundaries. So we're going to talk about all three of them. Now, if, notice how it says continental slash continental. That is not a mistake. It's, it's supposed to be like that. The slash represents the boundary. So it's like that's the slash right there. Continental represents that this is continental crust on the left side. Continental means it's continental crust as well on the right side. And when they come together, they start to push up over a long period of time. They come together and then that land in the middle here rises up. And this is how continental mountain ranges are formed. So an example would be like the Himalaya Mountains. Most mountain ranges are actually formed this way, I'd say. Most of the major mountain ranges. Not all of them, though, as we'll see later. But um, one of the major types right here, mountains, is formed in this, in this way. I would like for you to also draw this one. So notice how as you have rock layers that are being squeezed together, you get these wavy lines. Those are called the anticline is in the top part of it. And the bottom, the dip part under there is called the syncline. And this folds that you see forms what's called as folded mountains. And there are lots of folded mountain range here. You can see all the lines, the wavy lines. Now notice that they didn't break yet. A break would be considered a fault and that hasn't happened yet. So this is the folded mountain range. Now you can see sometimes when the folded mountain range happens, there's a little dip that opens up and sometimes little mini caves can be formed that way. It's not the most common way that caves are formed, but it is possible. Our second type of convergent boundary. Remember I said there's three types of convergent boundaries. There's three major types and this is three of a subcategory is when continental crust meets oceanic crust. Again we have two plates that are coming together but what happens when continental, the thicker continental crust meets the thinner but denser oceanic crust? Because the oceanic crust is so much denser it sinks underneath the continental crust. So oceanic crust is denser, it sinks underneath. The denser material always goes underneath. And this process of this sinking down underneath the other one should be familiar. This is the, um, this is subduction taking place in action. We already defined that before. I would like for you to draw this diagram, include the blue to represent the water, and then we just label the two different types of um, tectonic plates right here. So we have the oceanic crust right here, subducting underneath the continental crust on the right. So I told you this GIF was going to make it come back, and here it is, the Revenge of the GIF. 
Our third type of convergent boundary is when oceanic meets oceanic crust. Now, they're both in theory of equal density because they're both oceanic crust, but nothing's going to be perfectly the same in terms of density. One of them is going to buckle under the pressure and go underneath the other one. So notice how this dip down over here is that trench I was telling you about, the deep ocean trench. So the Mariana Trench is one of the most famous ones and it's kind of like a reverse mountain as i said but one of the places is going to go underneath the other one in the oceanic trench so that's your example right here if you had to say a place for it to take place trenches would be one of those examples and this all is taking place underneath so only oceanic crust is the type of crust that gets recycled the continental crust just kind of hangs out there um, and doesn't really go away the only way that it can disappear is by erosion along the sides of it like kind of reshaping it over time um and then new oceanic crust can obviously form through volcanic eruptions that make its way to the surface whereas oceanic crust is constantly getting recycled so the oldest rock that we're going to find on earth is going to be on the surface of the earth on continental crust older oceanic crust we don't have as much of it and it's hard to access as well so here we can see a couple different subduction zones right here. I see two right here. Now the difference is that right here is the oceanic crust here is subducting underneath the continental crust. That's one of the boundaries. The other boundary over here is when oceanic meets oceanic, like we just talked about. And then here is another convergent boundary over there where continental meets continental. So all three types of convergent boundaries are in this one diagram. Here's another example. See if you can figure out what's going on in this one. So here is the trench. We have one plate subducting underneath the other plate. They are both oceanic crust right over here. The Mariana Trench is located right here. Can't really see it, but if you notice, see how this little part is elevated and you can kind of make a little um, shape out of that? Well, that's because that is the outline of the Philippine plate. And when you have these two different oceanic plates coming together, one is subducting underneath the other one. It is the Pacific plate that is subducting underneath the Philippine plate right over there. And the Pacific plate is shrinking over time. You can actually imagine that as the Pacific plate starts to disappear, the ocean itself is going to shrink as well. And then on the other side, the Atlantic Ocean is going to continue to grow and get bigger. So at some point, the Atlantic Ocean might overtake the Pacific Ocean in terms of sheer size. This is a really cool image. It's really hard to see the details of it, but if you can, if you want to Google it to see more detail, there's like a really high resolution version of it where you can like zoom in and get really detail about this. But it just shows the, um, the depth uh, inside of the ocean, how deep certain places can be. So you can see down on the bottom left, that's the Mariana Trench. It's the deepest of all the trenches. There's a couple of other trenches that are a little bit above it, but you can see how much taller the mid-ocean ridge is over here compared to the Mariana Trench over there. You can almost take the mid-ocean ridge, pick it up, and almost like place it down to fill in the gap of the Mariana Trench. Now, this is the final... Um, type of tectonic plate boundaries, and it's called a transform boundary. So these are when the plates move past each other horizontally. So this is my expertly drawn um, diagram right here. This, I don't know if you can tell the shape of it, is supposed to represent California, and this one would be Nevada right over here. And you can see that this is the Pacific plate over here, and it's moving up that way, whereas the North American plate is sliding the complete opposite way. They slide past each other. The example of the location will be the San Andreas Fault. If you ever heard of that movie, which has uh, my cousin star in it, um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So he is in a movie called San Andreas. San Andreas has a massive earthquake that takes place. And so these zones of transformed boundaries are one of the most likely scenarios for there to be large earthquakes. As they slide past each other, they get hooked on each other. It's not perfectly smooth where they just uh, nice and glide past each other like that. No, they get caught on each other. And then as one gets pushed, the other one's pushing, they're pushing, they're pushing, they're pushing. There's no movement, but it builds up that pressure until finally it slides. And then the release of that pressure sends shock waves throughout the ground to the rock. And then that is, we experience as earthquakes. So you're going to experience earthquakes in these locations generally. You can have earthquakes in all of the different types of boundaries, but these are the ones that we're most likely to feel on the surface. So this is your final example. I would like for you to draw this as well. Pretty simple, right? If I'm able to draw this, I'm probably the world's worst artist, so I'm sure you can as well to the best of your ability. 
and then we could see the transform boundary here. And that is the end of our notes for plate tectonics. You made it. Good job.